Hello and welcome back to the Dassel uh, Rotorcraft tutorials. Um, I just wanted to do a little introduction before you go and actually do your pre-flight or your your um, your test flight, your initial test flight. Um, if you haven't already, you should make sure that your rate your transmitter is bound. Um, you should make sure you should go through and do your test flight or your pre-test flight procedures as shown in the previous tutorials. Uh, but I want to actually show some of the procedures here um, before you go out and test flight. Now it's a good idea if you have available uh, to do some practice flying in the simulator. Um, that will just give you a better idea of how to control because chances are when you do your first test flight here it's not going to be the most stable. Um, that being said, I'll leave that up to your your discretion, but uh, some of the things that we need to know before we can test fly with the Ardu pilot are it is first of all how to arm the Ardu pilot. So uh, when you initially when you initially set the vehicle down, uh, you will see a blue and a red light flashing flashing here. Uh, once that just flashes continuously red, you can. Um, you can the the you can then arm the the Ardu pilot. Um, so what you want to do is first of all make sure that it's balanced. Set it down. Plug it in. Wait for the blue light to stop flashing and only see the red flashing light. Once that happens, take your receiver, or your, sorry, excuse me, your transmitter and move the throttle to the minimum position and to the right. That will arm the Ardu pilot. You'll begin to see the Ardu pilot flash blue again um, and then we'll turn solid red. That means that the that it's armed and ready to go. Now if you want to disarm it, hold the throttle down and turn it to the left. Okay. The way I have it set up in these tutorials is we're using auxiliary channel 2 so you can see that there. Um, and for me, the minimum position is rotated fully clockwise. So when I want to start increasing my throttle, I want to sl slowly ramp this up until maximum throttle. And yeah, you do want to go to maximum throttle. Um, so yeah, at this point the rotors will be spinning and you will be ready to go, to fly. So at that point, slowly increase your throttle, or your, your collective pitch, uh, until the vehicle just begins to hover. Um, if, something begin if something goes wrong, just set it down. That's why we have these landing gear like this. Uh, so, you can, so you can land it rough without, without damaging it. And then if something, again, if something goes wrong, make sure you just decrease your throttle uh, to zero. One last thing that you want to check, so when we actually plug this in and turn this on, you want to make sure before you fly, and this is very important, uh, this, might, this might be the most important thing that we've done so far, you want to make sure that the that you have some negative pitch uh, on your on your rotors, uh, and this can be configured in the Ardu pilot. It should be that way negative or by default. Um, alternatively, you can just adjust the the control rods here. So when we first set it, the the swash plate should be level, and we should have some negative collective pitch. So you can see here these have negative pitch. A good way to tell is actually rotate the rotors like that. So now you can easily see the pitch. So as I increase it, you can see I can go from negative to positive pitch. Okay, so negative, positive. All right. And again, you want to make sure the swash plate is level. You want to make sure that you have po positive pitch. Um, finally, 
you want to check your battery voltage before you fly. You want to make sure that you have enough voltage to fly. So I've been flying with this battery for a little bit right now, so it's not going to be fully charged. So this will give you an idea of an intermediate reading. So that shows the all the, the, the voltage of all the cells, and now it's reading the voltage of the individual cells. You don't really want to let those individual cell voltages go below 3.6 uh, 3 or 3.5. Uh, that point you risk your speed controller cutting out and losing control and crashing. So that being said, I think you should be ready to go and do your first test flight. I'll attach that to the end of this video. Uh, and then in the following video, we'll analyze it and um, adjust our, our, con our PID values accordingly. So... Yeah, have fun and just be very careful. Make sure that you're in an open area. Um, in the video, you'll actually saw, see that I flew it inside. Uh, the only reason for that is because I have previously tuned this helicopter, so I'm fairly confident in my ability, and I've also flown it before. Um, also, I made sure there's nobody in the area, but you need to make sure that you're in an open area because they can be extremely uncontrollable before they're properly tuned. So you need to make sure that you're in a safe area, outdoors preferably, um, and definitely away from any spectators. The, the, RPM on, the RPMs on these rotors are, um, are quite impressive. So, uh, so yeah, you could really do some damage. But anyway, uh, be careful and enjoy the tuning video. Okay, so here you can see me attaching the battery. Uh, you'll notice that the the helicopter is sitting flat on the ground. Uh, that will help calibrate the accelerometers as it starts up. Now I'm just looking to make sure that the blue light is flashing and I'm waiting for the just the slow red flashing light. So that should be ready here in a moment. Okay, I'm coming back to get my radio. Now again, you want to make sure that your helicopter is in acro mode for your initial testing. So that's what we're testing here. Okay, so I am arming the helicopter as we just discussed. Uh, now I am slowly increasing the throttle. Okay, and I'm slowly increasing the throttle. I notice that it begins to yaw before I even take off, so as I'm inc increasing the collective, it yaws a little bit, so I use the yaw trim to cancel out that adverse yaw moment. Okay, So now that I've adjusted that, I'm ready to take off. So it's a little bit... If you look closely, you can see that it's extremely responsive, first of all, so that's the first sign that our PIDs are very, very high, or our proportional value is very, very high. And also, it might be hard to see in the video, but you can see the the helicopter shaking in roll, pitch, and even a little bit in the yaw. So that means that all of our proportional controls are a, a little bit high. So that's something that we're going to need to fix, and if you watch in the next video, you will be able to see exactly how we do that. Thank you.